various stakeholders, including Parliament, had called for more consultations in terms of the draft divorce bill, as some feared that the proposed reformed bill made it easier for people to walk in and out of marriage. With the consultations having kicked off, we are now joined by Chief Legislative Drafter and Acting Executive Director Felicity Kovosis in the Ministry of Justice. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening, thank you for having me. Well, first of all, give us an overview of what called for a reform in terms of the divorce bill. Okay, thank you. Um, the current divorce law is um, uh, um, uh, based on the common law. A common law is really not law that you can find. It's the Roman Dutch law that applied in the South, South Africa that, was, um, uh, uh, that became applicable in Namibia. So if someone would ask you, where do I find the divorce law of Namibia? You would have to consult case law in various textbooks. Mm -hmm. So the idea is basically to um, consolidate and reform the divorce laws of Namibia. Um, that's one of the aspects, or, or that's one of the reasons why we are reforming the law. The second one is the law is quite outdated and does not really speak to the reality, socioeconomic realities of Namibia, plus the aspect of legal fees that are involved in the divorce process and the fault-based system that the process currently has um, is also an impediment to div uh, divorce. Now, one of uh, the local daily newspaper's main headlines uh, main headline was titled Divorce to be made affordable. How expensive are divorces exactly? Okay. Um, divorce fees will range from uh, 20,000 or 30,000, even sometimes 80,000, depending on how long the divorce proceedings are. Uh, um, divorce proceedings are. What lengthens the divorce proceedings is mostly custody battles, battles uh, surrounding property and issues like that. So briefly tell us about the new proposals that have come out uh, from the consultations. Yes. Okay, from the consultations. First, I'll speak to the existing law and the proposed law. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently you have to... Uh, you have to prove four grounds for divorce. The first one is adultery. You have to uh, um, uh, prove that the one of the spouses has um, uh, committed adultery. Right. The second one is uh, incurable uh, mental illness mm -hmm. that has lasted for not less than seven years. The other one is the person has been declared a habitual criminal mm -hmm. and um, uh, has been imprisoned for five years after that. Right. And the other one is uh, malicious desertion. Malicious desertion can be actual or it can be const uh, constructive. Actual is when one of the parties leaves the common home without intending to return. Constructive is when one of the parties makes it so difficult for the party so that the innocent party leaves the home. So those are the four grounds. Right. So what we intend to do with this is we only want to introduce one ground for divorce. Um, it will be called uh, irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. What does it mean? Uh, when the marriage has disintegrated to such an extent that there are no reasonable prospects of uh, restoring the marriage to a normal marriage. So that will be the only ground that you have to state. Because you have to know with the current process, your pleadings have to state that a had um, sexual relations with B, a child was born out of it. Plus you have to stand in the open court and be, give evidence to that. In open court what it means is everybody is hearing what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the rationale uh, or the reasons why, why we're opting for the one ground for, for divorce. So you don't have to state the facts, but you are at liberty. Uh, you are still at choice, you can state the facts. Now, uh, most divorces are done in Ventuk. Are there plans to decentralize uh, the process um, to other regions and how imperative is it? Yes. Okay, currently uh, divorces are only heard by the High Court. So we have the High Court, the main division in Ventuk and the other division in, Sok um, in Oshakari. Sorry. Mm. So what we plan to do with this um, new law is we want to amend the Magistrates Courts Act by empowering regional magistrates or giving them power or authority to deal with divorce cases. Right. So, but it will only be regional magistrates that are specifically designated by the Magistrates Commission that will be able to hear and determine divorces. Right. Mm. Now, um, the fault-based system of divorce has been one of the reasons that the law was called for reform. Uh, however, certain stakeholders felt that this made it easier and didn't bring it uh, value or didn't bring any value to the marriage, maybe for an understanding why should this be taken out 
and the benefits of not having to prove that one party was at fault for grounds of divorce. Okay, thank you. I think I spoke to that a little bit, but mm. I'll, I'll give a scenario. Say now I'm in um, a relationship uh, where domestic violence is mm. involved, mm. or um, uh, the relationship has disintegrated just to the effect that there's no love and affection. Mm. Um, so currently you are confined to the four grounds. Three of the grounds are based on fault, except for mental illness. Right. So you have to prove that the other party did commit a misconduct. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and then the rationale is basically to um, uh, ensure that, uh, say now someone who is in a domestic violent relationship or the children are in a domestically violent relationship, mm -hmm. so that to enable people who want to divorce on other grounds also to divorce on those grounds right. and not to be confined to the four grounds that are stated. Right. So that's a, a, and yes, the uh, organizations such as uh, religious institutions, others, they have aired their view and, mm. and said that oh, we are making divorce easier. But, but I would not say it makes divorce easy, divorces easier. It's just that um, we are trying to align the grounds of divorce to what is currently happening. Things mm. that were not thought of in the 1970s and 60s when the new divorce uh, rules, you know, um, or when the old divorce rules applied. Yes. Uh, and finally, um, has a time frame been set for the consultations? I mean, how long will it take perhaps? Yes, um, we have actually been consulting since last year. Mm -hmm. Some of the consultations were where we invited written consultations from stakeholders. Just uh, on Wednesday, we had a stakeholder consultations with various organizations. So we have really received a lot of input. So what we'll be doing is we look at our current proposals and see what the public out there says and see what's the middle ground that we can reach. So we have actually basically come to the end of the consultation process, but public can still submit. We will not say no, and we are ready to hear what the others have to say about their proposals. Well, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> well, of course, we're talking to the Chief Legislative Drafter and Acting Executive Director, Felicity Ovosek.